Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today is your lucky day. You have the chance to win one million hypothetical dollars, and all you have to do is pick the right door. One, two, or three. Mm, let's go with all of you who pick door number two. But before I reveal your option, I'm instead going to show you what's behind door number one. It's empty. Good thing we didn't pick that one, right? But wait, I'll give you another option. Should we switch to door number three or just stick with door number two? Well, it doesn't really matter, right? Since the odds are 50-50 either way. And you just lost a million dollars. Here, math could have saved you. The chances were not actually 50-50, but door number three had a 66% chance of being the right door. Thanks to a little bit of math and conditional probability, you now know that you should always switch, and you also know the answer to this infamous Monty Hall problem. Mathematics is beautiful. It is one of the greatest tools invented by mankind. It completely shapes our understanding of this universe and us humans. Psychology is just applied biology. Biology is applied chemistry, chemistry is applied physics, and yes, physics is applied math. Here, math is pure. And I just proved to you, mathematically, why it is so fundamental to us. But the math that we see in our textbooks today is commendably different from the math that we knew about at around 4000 BC, which was the ripe age of humanity when we invented counting. Yes, a math exam in 4000 BC would have involved a lot of pictures of cows followed by counting the number of cows. This counting was as rudimentary as drawing one line for every object that you saw that which you may now know as tally marks. But realizing that this was a horribly inefficient process, look, our mindsets changed, and the Sumerians invented symbols for each count of things. That was the invention of the number system. As much of an innate concept that numbers may seem to you, it was actually quite difficult to grasp for early humans. Still, different number systems spread throughout the world and mathematics, as we know today, was beginning to form. However, there was one flaw in the way that everyone thought about math. Everyone at that time, and before that time, thought that math was something concrete. Yeah, something that you could see and touch. When a student of the 15th century thought about the statement, the square of two is four, or two squared is four, he would imagine a literal square that had an area of four and a side length two. This very mentality was a hindrance to the development of math. That was until people began thinking about the square roots of negative numbers. If two into two was four, then what into what would give you minus four? At first, it didn't even matter because think about it, a square that had a negative area could not even exist. But, as a few of you may know today, that was not the case. Our amazing mathematicians reasoned out, since all the numbers were basically invented by us, we should just invent new numbers that would become the square roots of negative numbers. And they did, very creatively calling them imaginary numbers, denoted by the small letter i. i was the square root of negative 1 which means i multiplied by i is minus 1. When I first heard about this concept in the ninth grade, all I could imagine was a big fat F on my next math exam. But honestly, I was just surprised at how conveniently this little i fit into our equations and formulas. Let me give you an example. Three seemingly unrelated and random numbers, pi, like the one from the circle, our imaginary number i and a similar number e just magically came together in this elegant formula. e raised to the pi i is equal to negative 1. Amazing, isn't it? The moment we overcame the shackles of merely thinking about math as something concrete and delved into the abstract world, a massive sea of undiscovery opened up. Our math could now explain four-dimensional or even five-dimensional geometry. 
math began to succeed human intelligence. Let us all have a little thought experiment and I will try to show you what a four-dimensional sphere, also called a hypersphere, could look like. Imagine yourself to be living in a 2D land. Your entire world is a piece of paper. You have only seen and heard of shapes on paper, like triangles, squares and circles. You cannot fathom or imagine what a three-dimensional shape, like a cube or a sphere, could look like. But one fine day, a sphere happens to pass through your 2D world. What would you see? Think about it. A sphere is just circles of different sizes stacked one upon each other. So, as the sphere passed through your 2D world, you would see the cross-section of the sphere. A circle, yes, it is initially small, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then smaller and smaller again. Now, let us apply this same thought to our 3D world, where you and I cannot imagine what a four-dimensional hypersphere could look like. One fine day, a 4D hypersphere happens to pass through our 3D world. What would we see? Yes, we would see the cross-section of this hypersphere, which is a sphere. It gets bigger and bigger in size right out of thin air, smaller and smaller, and then disappears again. Amazing, isn't it? How math can act as a link between our primitive minds and such complex ideas. Now you might be wondering, Pranamya, what's the use? If our world is in 3D, why exactly do we need all these other dimensions? <laughs> well, this valid question actually has an astonishing answer. Our math and physics have revealed that perhaps the universe is not just constituted by three dimensions, you know, the length, breadth and height, but not even four or five or six, but maybe made up of entirely ten different dimensions. You and I cannot see them, but our math can. They're as plain as day. We can predict the movement of almost all the planets, stars and black holes a hundred years into the future. You and I cannot time travel, but look, our numbers can. Thanks to the imaginary numbers that our amazing mathematicians cooked up in the 1500s, we now have the Schrodinger equation, which is one of the most important equations in the entirety of physics and quantum mechanics. And looky here, it makes use of our imaginary number i. So, as much as you may fear the subject, please remember that math has always been a friend. It is just a little misunderstood under the facade of some complicated looking numbers and symbols. You need not be the best at it to appreciate its magnificence and beauty and even enjoy it. So, ask questions, fight with math and love math. And I'm sure that you can be the next to completely change the way humanity views the universe. Thank you.